One of the most common questions that I get is why don't you tape your paper down when you paint? So today I'm going to talk about why I stopped taping my paper down and some of the advantages that come with that decision. A few years ago, I took a workshop with Andy Evenson, and he's a fantastic watercolor artist. And I noticed that he didn't tape his paper down to a board or any type of surface when he was painting. In his workshop, I tried to paint that way as well. At first, it was very unsettling that my paper was just sitting on my surface and it was uncomfortable painting that way. But I started to watch him paint and I realized a few things. I started to realize how important my first wash of my painting was for values and for the colors, the different color changes around the scene of my painting. So when I started to wet my paper down and I followed this Andy Evenson approach, this gave me more time to paint wet into wet. And there are some benefits that go with that. There aren't a lot of opportunities when you're creating a painting where you can paint wet into wet for on this scale. There might be small little washes that you do where you can um, change colors and obviously paint wet into wet in those occasions, but there's one time in your painting when you can paint wet into wet the most, and that is the first wash of your painting. By wetting down both sides of the paper and laying the paper flat, it gives us a lot more time to work on this first wash. We can have more time to take advantage of this unique part of our medium. It's the only time you can load up a brush and let colors just flow freely from one into another. And this soft glow that you get in some scenes, I really like a sense of light and a sense of glow. All that can happen when I'm paying attention to those things within my first wash. As my paintings became more complicated and more nuanced, I wanted to be more mindful of changing color in this first wash. I have a lot more time to think about the lightest values. What are the lightest values of every part of the scene and what color is needed? And with this approach, you have more time to think about those things and work on those things without the worry that your paper is gonna dry up and you're not gonna be able to get those beautiful soft edges and transitions in color. Another reason was I was becoming more interested in painting skies. If there's more value changes, if the maybe it's more complicated scenes of clouds, you're gonna need more time to work on these scenes when you're painting wet into wet. The second part to this approach is I was painting at an angle, a, a fairly steep angle, 30 or 40 degrees maybe. And when I started this approach of just wetting the paper down, I flattened out my workspace a little bit more. Now it's not completely flat, maybe 10 to 15 degrees of angle. But while I'm working wet into wet on these longer scenes, I don't want all my washes to flow one direction. I don't want them to all flow down on my paper. And if I'm working on more of an angle, that's kind of what's happening. You're getting a lot more effect of your washes flowing in one direction. So some of the concerns that I had and that I hear from people that haven't tried this before is it's a little uneasy to not have your paper taped down to the surface. And I understand that. I totally get that. I felt that way too when I was first starting to paint that way. But one nice thing that happens is when you wet down both sides, the paper lays flat on your surface and it actually sticks to your surface. And so there, it's a lot more stable and you have a lot more control than you might think you do. Where it becomes a little different is after your first wash has dried in the middle values, sometimes your paper might curl up a little bit. The more that you do this, the more you get used to it. And I, I think the benefits of painting this way outweigh the, some of the cons. And so there are a few cons, there are a few changes to this approach. One is you do get a little bit of warping of your paper at times. And I've, get, I've gotten used to painting that way and working through that, but that is something that happens and some people don't like that. If you like to paint very precise, you don't want it might be easier for you to just tape your paper down and leave it that way. Another con is if you like to pick up your painting while you're in progress and tilt it around 
and, and let your washes flow different directions. You can't really do that with this approach. Once it's on, on your surface and it's wet on both sides, it's kind of just going to be there until it dries. Okay, let's recap really quick. By not taping down your paper and wetting both sides of your paper, you're giving yourself more time to work wet into wet and take advantage of this beautiful part of the medium. You have more time to switch colors and to think through this first wash more thoroughly. And by painting wet into wet, this nice glow can be achieved, this great sense of light. It adds another interesting characteristic to your painting that I think is worth it. And the second major benefit gives you more time to work on this first wash, which generally includes skies, so complicated cloud scenes and things like that. You'll have more time to work on that if you're wetting down both sides of your paper. So I think the main takeaway here is find the approach that works best for you. If you've never painted this way, I suggest you give it a try. Wet down both sides with a sponge, lay it down on your surface, and see if you like to paint that way. Now it does take some getting used to, but if it's not for you, that's okay. You know, this approach doesn't have to work for everyone. I think it's important that you find what way you are most comfortable to paint and you do what works for you. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, how to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've got some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talked through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. I hope that brought a little bit of clarity to this question. Thank you guys for spending some time with me here today. Keep practicing, keep moving forward, and I'll see you next time.